What's up everyone? All right, well, I'm uh, doing this recap. I just did the recap and DLPN was ripping during the recap without me. I'm leaving a lot of money on the table today, but I'm walking away green. I was up 51,000, gave back about 8,000 off the top. So I'm up 43,000 and uh, I, I wanna keep that in my pocket. I don't wanna overstay my welcome. I did a lot of overstaying my welcome in January and February. And I'm trying to be more consistent about getting in, getting some profit and getting out. And whatever happens, you know, after I leave, it ends up ripping up to into a halt minutes after I leave. While I'm doing my recap, so be it. That's part of trading. You're always doing one of two things. You're leaving money on the table or you're giving back profit. And today, I guess I kind of did both actually. I gave back profit and then as it turns out, had I kept trading, maybe, you know, I, I would have made more, but, um, but maybe not, you know, I, you see something make a big move and then you also recognize that you could have been the person who bought the top, got shaken out on a false breakout and managed to lose money on it. So you have to be grateful for what you have. And um, so got green, staying green and locking it up. And that's, 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 that's that for today. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, recap. And as always, in case you didn't already know, trading is risky. Most beginner traders struggle and lose money. So you should practice a simulator before you put real money on the line. I know some of you watching me uh, during the morning show will think, man, he's making it look so easy. It's not different from someone, you know, watching someone ride a bike if you don't know how to ride a bike or watching someone swim if you don't know how to swim. Those things look easy when you know how to do it, but it's learning that's difficult. And I would, from talking with um, people of all different walks of life, um, I asked someone who's a, a pilot, I said, was it harder to learn how to fly a plane or to day trade? And he said, day trading hands down. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a hard thing to learn, but um, it, it of course is a lot of fun and it's very interesting and it's trying to solve this puzzle in the market every single day. And if you solve it correctly, you walk away with a little bit of profit. So um, I hope you guys enjoy the recap and I'll see you for the morning show. First thing tomorrow morning. All right, see you then. All right, everyone. So I'm gonna do a quick recap of my trades from today. Not gonna to overstay my welcome. Gave back about 8K off the top. Ooh, wild morning. NFT, that was the catalyst. Um, TCAT, beginning with TCAT. First trade was on uh, TCAT and I traded this a bit pre-market. We had an AB, well, not really a perfect ABC to set up, but an apex long right there, which I bought and I wanted to get in lower, but I kind of, I didn't get a good entry and then I chased it high. It did break new highs, so I sold that with about $8,000 of profit. I don't remember if I did a dip trade in there, but then at the open, we got this awesome squeeze from 59 up to 70. Bought right here, and in this candle, that false breakout lost $8,000. So it went from, uh, I don't know, up 8,000 on it to down $743. And that, that was the loss that kind of screwed up my day. Uh, but, while I was still up 8,000, I then switched gears. And uh, so I had my first trade on TCAT pre-market here. And then DLPN ripped up pre-market from six to 14. And it's currently right now halted going up at 1245 without me. I'm not in it. So this one's going without me and might give me a little FOMO here. I don't know if I'm gonna trade it anymore. I, I probably shouldn't. But in any case, whatever it does, uh, the next levels that I would watch would be uh, 13 and then 1360, 1370. Then we're kind of looking at a move back to the highs. And son of a gun, why VR? Look at this thing. So <laughs> this is just a wild morning and we're still seeing some momentum here. Um, the thing on YVR, the halt level is 716. So you can see I'm up 2,900 on YVR. We'll just look at this one for a second. This one's also halting going up. It's also continuing without me. The first one minute candle to make a new high right there. Very nice. But I did the dip and the rip on the halt resumption. And on that trade right there, I didn't really do super well. You know, I, because look at that false breakout and then it came back down. 
and then it set up a one minute trade. So after that false breakout, that's when I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do my recap. I'm not really feeling it. It's, I lost 8,000 on TCAT and then that trade on YVR wasn't great. My better trades on it uh, were, my first trade was a long at $6. Pops up to 618, then up to 620, and then halts at 637. So that's where I made the majority of my profit on YVR. Uh, the last uh, trade right in this area wasn't great. And if I had jumped in right there for the break of seven and sold at 7, 15, 720, that could have been okay, but it, did, it actually did a false halt, it looks like. So I don't know, but let's, let, and son of a gun, let's look back at TCAT. Back to the highs, no, unbelievable. So 70, 63. Oh boy, this that's tough to see. There's there's new high. Oh man. Well, you know what? Sometimes you just feel like you're just a a little late and you're just not dialed in. And I guess that's what happened today. This was the spot. I'm jumping all over the place, but this was the spot right here where I lost eight thousand bucks. Look at that. Nice green candle and then instant rejection from 70 down to 66, a five, four, five dollar a share rejection. And then yeah, it curls back up here, but even on that candle, it broke to 71.99 and then back down here to 68.69. So I don't know, but TCAT was tricky. DLPN, let's look at this one. So DLPN uh, on this one, let's uh, pull up the one minute chart. So I was trading TCAT and I started seeing people saying, DLPN, DLPN, DLPN. And I was like, I, what's going on? So I, I wasn't looking at my high a day Momo scanner right here, but I guess DLPN must've been on it. So anyways, DLPN ripped up to the top of the gap scanner, actually was gapping up 96% at the open and became the second leading gapper in the market this morning. And the catalyst news was posted right at 9 a.m. and it um, started spiking instantly so launches the NFT token, NFT creation and marketing division, expects first partnership and collectibles. And this, that catalyst and the record sale in NFTs is what drove this move on TCAT from three, four dollars up to 70. So it also uh, was the momentum behind the OCG move. And I think traders are looking for the next one. And so when DLPN pops up with that catalyst, it's hot. This is exactly what we saw with electric vehicles. Any electric vehicle catalyst, super hot traders jump on it. We saw it with um, cryptocurrencies. Any Bitcoin mining cryptocurrency related catalyst is even still pretty darn hot. So we get into these little kind of cycles in the market where uh, traders just get kind of like all gung-ho about these different catalysts. And let's watch DLPN on resumption here. So DLPN was halted at 45. Generally on something like this, I would say dip and rip. Now I'm gonna go with smaller size, but let's, so it's not dipping, it's just ripping. Yeah, so that's tricky. So the high there is 35. It's pulling back a little bit and we've got 1371, which is kind of the, the level that I'm watching. Boy, it's, I mean, we'll see. It's got a hold um, probably like 1245, 1250. This is a micro pullback right there. Uh, 1335 is the high. Yeah, this is, uh, whew, this is some wild stuff. You've got 18 million shares of volume on this one right now. Uh, you can see right there, 18 million shares, but this 10 second chart. So I'm, I'd be watching this right here for green on the tape and then the breakthrough 25 and 30. The one minute's not set up yet, and there in that candle, it just flushes down and now it's back back lower. So this is actually very similar to the way YVR resumed from its halt. It sort of initially was looking good and then it pulled back. And now YVR is giving you this sort of one minute setup here around 719. So in any case, um, on DLPN, I saw, I saw the news and I jumped in it and I, I chased it and I knew I was chasing it but the reason I chased it was because of the catalyst, because I saw how much it moved. TCAT had just made that huge move. DLPN, it rips up and I was like, I can't, I can't wait on this. If I wait, I'm gonna miss the move. 
And so I bought it kind of like right in this momentary pullback right here. And my long was, let's see, I was adding uh, for the break of 12, I have orders here at 11, 69, 78, 90, 98, 13, then added at 1392, added at 1403, and added as high as 1450. The high was 1476. And that's very typical of me that when something is moving quick, I add into the breakout. I just keep adding because you never know. We've had stocks like this where they'll go up to, you know, $18, $20. So I'll keep adding. And then as soon as I see weakness, I'll just sell it. And so that's basically what I did. I kept adding, saw some weakness, took it off the table. And just like that was up, I think 26,000 or so, maybe on my first trade. We got a one minute pullback there. And then we got some dip trades down here that I traded as well. So buying the dips, because each of these candles are like a dollar a share. So 6,000 shares, dip trade, adding back on the break through the high. And you know, just like that, that's a $6,000, $8,000 trade. So we got some really nice action on that. Um, right now, you've got a bit of a double top at 1335, it looks like. So 1335 is a bit of a resistance level. Uh, TCAT also has a double top up here at about 72. So where things went kind of wrong for me today was that one loss on TCAT. I was up 51,000 and I was like, man, you're, you know, you're smoking, you're crushing it, you're doing so well, Mo momentum's hot, market's hot. But you know, you look at this and it's like, um, you know, this was a good pullback trade. Uh, the entry was 68.25. I got in a little high. I was in at, let's see, um, 69 and 70. So I was in at about 69.25. I chased it a little bit. And it popped up to 70.63 to new highs. And then just instantly reversed. And I didn't see that coming. Um, so on that one, you know, I, I got got a good size loss. And with that, now I'm kind of a little more timid because I'm like, well, I'd really like to keep the majority of this in my pocket. I've just given back 10 grand or whatever, eight grand. I really don't want to give back too much more. So now I'm feeling like, all right, I got to start cooling off and slowing down. You know, it's only, it's not even 10 a.m., but I just don't want to, I just don't want to give back more gains. And, you know, as you know, I lost $47,000 on uh, Friday morning. So, I finished the day down about 26,000. Yesterday I made 18,000. So, you know, today gets me back to, you know, fully recovered from the, the red day on, on Friday. So, you know, it's, I, I don't have a, I don't know. I mean, I'm green on the month, but I, I don't feel like I have a ton of room to be really aggressive and risky. But you know what, I'm probably gonna walk away and then I'm gonna see later tonight that one of these you know, or something else went crazy and I'm gonna be like, God dang it. But at the same time, I gotta, I gotta walk away. I gotta walk away. I gotta take that profit and walk away. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to do the right thing there. And, um, you know, I, I got green, gave back a little off the top. You know, that's, that's typical. That's, that's just pretty much momentum trading anyways. So um, the best thing I can do at this point is shut it all down and not look at charts anymore. Because if I keep looking at stuff, I'll convince myself to jump back in. And then all of a sudden I'm back in something with 10,000 shares for another false breakout. And instead of losing eight grand, I lose 18. And now I'm up only, only 25,000, which while that is still a great day, whenever you've given back more than half your gains, you, you can't help but feel a bit of FOMO there. So uh, scanners, um, I mean, and really, uh, DLPN, you guys are funny. So let me just look. I, I closed the DLPN chart. I still have it up on this computer, so let me just check. So DLPN just squeezed a 14. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, you know what? I'm sure there's people out there that'll trade it all day, and I'm sure there's people that'll make more money on, on it than me, but hey, when's, when's enough enough? So 40,000 bucks is a fantastic day, and I'm... I have to be grateful for that and not 
risk that to try to get bigger and bigger and bigger because then that's where I'm going to get myself into trouble. So I just, you know, I'm trying to be a little more protective of my emotional state this month after having what I would call both a P&L and emotional roller coaster in, um, uh, in January and, and February. And I'd rather just kind of be a little more consistent and step off of some of these areas where I think I could end up giving back all my gains. So anyways, that's it for me. Have a great rest of the day. As a reminder for those on YouTube and Facebook, if you didn't already know, day trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money. Uh, if you think that I'm making it look easy, it's just because I've been doing this for a long time and uh, it's it has become sort of second nature and there's DLPN up towards 15. So, you know, these will go with or without you and you've just got to learn the strategy. Practice, practice, practice. And those of you guys in the room uh, who continue trading, you're not blindly following me. You're trading these because you understand the strategy and that's the right way to do it. This is the right stock to trade, in my opinion, as a momentum trader. Uh, DLPN, leading gapper in the entire market uh, and with extremely high relative volume. So uh, you, you guys have the right idea. And there you go, it's halted again going up. So good job, make as much as you can on it, but be smart and remember when to walk away. I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. And that right there was an entire video with no ads. I don't monetize my YouTube channel with video ads, which means you guys get to enjoy the content. But do me a favor, please, Hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and let YouTube know that this channel is the channel to watch if you want to learn about day trading.